Hey everyone, Steph here from Old Guy Melts Plastic. Um, due to a recent video I posted where I was printing out some skirt parts that had uh, some mesh layers underneath the, uh, the top layers, I had a few viewers comment and question or ask how to go about um, implementing those prints or doing those prints on a single nozzle printer. So um, I'm going to record this video, kind of give you a bit of a tutorial on how to do that. There's a few different um, things that are required. So here's a, a skirt part uh, for a Voron V2 that I'm going to use as an example. But really, the concepts apply to anything that you print where you want to change the color midway through the print and maybe change the infill um, to, to match and you know whatever design you're looking for. So to start, you want to have um, some macros set up in your printer. And if they're not already there, you'll need to add them in. Um, there are multiple resources for, you know, defining the macros and, and setting them up, but I refer to Ellis's print tuning guide. Um, and he has a page here under useful macros for pause, resume filament swaps and center sensors. So, um, I'd recommend going through this page and kind of testing the pause and resume functionality just to make sure that the, the macros are doing what you need them to do and are moving to the appropriate locations on the bed. Um, once you have the macros in place, um, in order to take advantage of the filament swap um, from the slicer, you'll also want to include the M600 macro, which um, simply in this case, um, Andrew Ellis has defined this M600 macro to just use his pause macro, so it's effectively the same thing. Um, but the M600 uh, G-code command is typically what's going to be pushed into the G-code file from the slicer when you uh, request a filament swap. So uh, having this set up and, and tested before you get to slicing parts is somewhat important. So go through this step. I'm not going to walk you through the process. It's all here in the document, but I will link this document in the video description below. All right, so once you have those macros in place and have tested them and you're happy that they're working as they should, then how do you go about prepping your parts to get the desired infill settings um, that you're looking for? So um, I'm going to show you how I did my skirt parts on my Voron V2. Obviously, if you want to change the pattern or do things uh, a bit differently, you can do that as well. Uh, but I'll show you my steps. So to start with, you need a part. Um, and if you want the, the infill underneath to kind of show through, you need a part that has some solid material at the bottom um, with some you know, more elevated features above. So for example, you can see clearly here that there's kind of this solid base um, and then the ridges go up from there for the different hex sides. Um, so if your part doesn't already have that, then you could you know, add a part to give you that and you know adjust it accordingly. Let's just make this considerably smaller. Doesn't really matter if it's attached to it or not. Um, and then finding the right height is a bit important. So let me just set it to say 1.6 millimeters as an example. And then we want to make sure that that part that we've added is laid flat on the bed, right? So, I mean, I'll put this off to the side and you'll see it'll behave um, based on how I set the other parts as well. So the next thing you want to do is you need to know the height of that, that base layer. How, how tall is it currently in the slicer in the part that you've got uh, or in the, the added part that you've added? Um, and so the easiest way to do that is, you know, based on your current slicing settings, could just go ahead and slice the part. And now we can use the scroll bar here in the print preview um, in the slicer. I'm using Prusa Slicer 260, but it's the same in uh, Super Slicer. Um, haven't really done this in Orca Slicer, but there's probably an equivalent um, display to kind of get the same view. Um, so you'll have to try it with uh, other slicers. But for Prusa Slicer and Super Slicer, the same, the same process works just fine. Um, so we're at the top here of the, the, the build plate, um, the plate of parts, and we want to scroll down until we don't see any layers above this base layer here. So let's see where that is. 
and I can just use my mouse wheel on this bar to kind of scroll down or, you know, if I want to go a little faster, I can drag it down with the mouse cursor. And let's see, we're getting close. So we can zoom in and kind of see where that ends up. All right, so right here, you see the difference between, in my case, it looks like between four millimeters and 4.2 millimeters, and I am slicing with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Um, we have the bottom, what I'll call the bottom solid layer, and you know it's not solid because I've got infill set here, but um, this is the layer that I want to stop my um, infill for my grid that I want to show up behind. The 4.2 millimeters is the first layer of what I would print in the following color, in the next color. So what I need to do is click on this little plus icon here to the right of that bar. And what it allows you to do is add a color change. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you'll see that the color changes from the bottom to the top. Now I'm using my colors here. Uh, this top blue isn't my default purple. So I'm going to right click on the blue, the dark blue bar here, anywhere on the dark blue bar. And it'll bring up the option to change the colors. And I'm going to switch it to purple. So it looks like the part that I end up printing. OK, so now that we know the height that we need to make the color change, if we scroll up through this, we're going to see that I can see the light blue showing underneath and then the purple showing above that. Now, we know that that color change happens at 4.2 millimeters. So what I'd like to do here is set, um, we're just going to ignore the generic slab here, but I'm going to set a height range modifier. And I need to specify what height range I'm working with. So in this case, it's from the build plate at zero all the way to 4.2 millimeters. And with that set, I need to right click on this range modifier and click on infill. And I also want to right click and click on layers and perimeters. So you have the option to add additional settings. So we could add some more infill settings. I'm not sure exactly what values are there. Let's see, we get oh, fill angle, excellent. Fill angle is one that I want. So let's go ahead and add that. All right. so. Um, to get the look that I want, I know from experience, and you can play with this to get, you know, whatever effect you're looking for, but I like the honeycomb because it matches the hexes that are there, and 25% uh, fill density gives me the right size grid for what I find aesthetically pleasing. You know, you can obviously adjust this up or down based on what you want. Um, but we also want there to not be any solid layers either above or below that grid. So there should be, we want to set the bottom solid layers to zero and the top solid layers to zero for this height range between zero and 4.2 millimeters. Now, when I slice that, see that my uh, add-on part on the side here is affected by that because it's printing in that same height range. It was only 1.6 millimeters high, I think. So um, it's going to be fully, um, in fact, it is already all infill like that. Now, this grid infill, um, let's go scroll up through the part and see what that looks like once it starts to fill in. Aha. OK, so what we have is the grid infill behind the hexes underneath. And with that pause macro and the resume macro enabled in your printer config, the when this printer goes to print this part, um, it'll actually you know pause and move the tool head away from the printed part to whatever corner of the bed you specify in those macros. Um, and then wait for you to do a filament change. You swap the new color filament in after removing the old filament. You do a little bit of a purge to make sure that there's none of the old color in place. 
and then you hit resume and it just goes back printing the new color right on top of the old color. Um, now, in my case, there's one additional thing I want to tweak here because these, um, you don't see the full hex, but this hex is oriented at a different angle than the underlying hexes. And I find that's a little bit jarring for, for my perspective. So I know from experience that if I change this fill angle to 90% or 90 degrees, it's going to reorient these hexes so they're in the same orientation as the larger hexes above. So let's go ahead and change that. And there you have it. So the little hexes in the small mesh grid are in the same orientation as the larger hexes above that. And yeah, we can just get rid of this generic slab here. It's not really doing anything for us. It was just an example to show you how you could add the solid base layer if it doesn't already exist in the part. So there we have it. Um, this part is ready to print. Um, my printer already has those makers enabled. So if I load the blue filament in first, it'll print in blue. And then when it pauses, I can swap out the blue for the purple and resume the print and it'll just print the purple on top. And you end up with a part that is a single piece uh, no need for super glue to glue a mesh onto the back of the other part. Um, and yeah, all done in the slicer, no CAD required. Now you could do this in CAD as well and add additional bodies um, to the part and choose to print those other bodies in a different color with different infill settings. That is another way to do it. And in, in some situations that might be a better way to do it if you're uh, comfortable working in CAD. But uh, for those of us who maybe are less comfortable working in CAD, Here's a method in the slicer that you can leverage for uh, achieving a similar effect um, with pretty little effort on your part. So that's it for this video. Um, hope this was useful and uh, look forward to your comments in the video below. Thanks for watching.